There are three muscle palpation protocols that take advantage of scapulohumeral rhythm. That is a rhythm between the movement of the humerus at the glenohumeral joint and the scapula at the scapulocostal, also known as scapulothoracic joint. And more specifically, we will take advantage of the fact that when the arm is adducted and extended, the nervous system knows that it needs to downwardly rotate the scapula to couple with that. So, Justin, I would like you to place your right hand in the small of your back. And when he does that, his arm is adducted and he's extended. If I ask him to lift his hand away from the small of his back, he would further extend the arm, the humerus, at the glenohumeral joint, and the nervous system will look to engage the three major downward rotators of the scapula. And they are the rhomboids here, the pectoralis minor in front, and also to some degree the levator scapulae muscle that's located up over here. Let's demonstrate this now for the rhomboids. So right now when he's relaxed, we have a smooth contour here. Now go ahead, Justin, and I want you to further extend your arm at the shoulder joint by bringing your hand away from the small of your back. Go ahead. And right there, I can see the inferior border of the rhomboids becoming apparent. Relax, relax fully, smooth contour, lift away, and there I have the inferior border of the rhomboids, and then I can strum perpendicularly across the fibers through the belly of the rhomboids. Relax down, and one more time until I get off the rhomboids way up here. So there are the rhomboids right there, and relax. Scapulohumeral rhythm, employing adduction and extension of the arm at the glenohumeral joint to cause the nervous system to couple downward rotation of the scapula, can also be used for the pectoralis minor. So I'm going to ask you to take your hand and place it in the small of your back, but just let it relax there. I have to first now locate approximately where the pectoralis minor is. I find the clavicle. I run laterally, distally. I find the concavity of the clavicle. I drop immediately down. I feel the coracoid process of the scapula right here. I drop just off it. Now I'm on the pec major, but through it is the pec minor. So now, Justin, please go ahead and bring your hand away from the small of your back. And very clearly, you can see me strumming perpendicular to the pec minor. Relax. It's soft. Engage. Lift away. It's hard. Confirmation that I'm on it. Relax. And then I could go in baby steps and follow the slips toward the third, fourth, and fifth ribs. Lift your hand away, etc. in that fashion. And relax. Scapulohumeral rhythm for engagement of the pectoralis minor. And the third muscle palpation protocol in which we can take advantage of scapulohumeral rhythm is palpation of the levator scapulae muscle. In this particular palpation protocol, the value is less to make the levator scapulae contract, even though because it is a weak downward rotator of the scapula, it would engage if we have the arm extend an adduct, but it's more so because we want to reciprocally inhibit the upper trapezius, which is superficial to the levator scapulae in this area. So since the upper trapezius is an upward rotator, if we place his hand in the small of the back and the arm is adducted and extended, then that position would make the nervous system aware that we're calling upon some downward rotation of the scapula and that would reciprocally inhibit and therefore relax the upper trapezius. So in this circumstance, if I ask him for a gentle elevation of the shoulder girdle, relax, the upper trapezius is likely to not contract because it's reciprocally inhibited, and it's more likely that the levator scapulae will engage and we will be able to feel it because the upper trap is relaxed. So I would find the medial border of the scapula, the root of the spine of the scapula is right here because there's the spine running to the medial border. I come up, 
and I find the superior angle of the scapula. I drop directly off of it superiorly, and the levator scapulae is right in here. Now give me a gentle elevation of the shoulder girdle, and I can feel the levator scapulae engage, but the upper trapezius stays relaxed. Now it's important in this circumstance that I do not ask for a very forceful elevation of the scapula. Give me a more forceful one, because then the upper trapezius, relax, the reciprocal inhibition of the upper trapezius would be overridden because the nervous system is basically saying, give me all elevators of the scapula that we have because we need more strength. So it's always important when we use reciprocal inhibition in a palpation protocol that we ask for a gentle contraction of the joint action, the target muscle here, levator scapulae. Now we only need to do this when we are deep to upper trap. So I would do it here. Give me a gentle elevation. There's levator scap. Relax. A baby step up this way. A gentle. There's levator scapulae there. Relax. Another baby step. Gentle. Right there. And relax. But now I'm at the border of upper trapezius. Once I pass into the posterior triangle of the neck here, the levator scapulae is superficial. The upper trapezius is not in our way. There's no need for this position on the part of the client. I mean, he could stay there, but there's no need for it. Now, I'm directly on levator scapulae. Now you can give me an elevation of the shoulder girdle. And actually, you can give me a more forceful one against my resistance. A little harder. There we go. And there's levator scapulae right there. And relax. So we had three muscle palpation protocols in which we take advantage of the arm extending and adducting to call upon a downward rotation force on the scapula. We had the rhomboids, we had the pec minor in front, and we have the levator scapulae back over here. If you liked this video, know that it is part of our video streaming subscription service. Click the link below for more information and receive a free ebook when you sign up.